I don't know how inspiring I can be. I'm starting to fade after four, four busy days. Um, and, and jet lag is catching on me, even though uh, it's been four days here in Europe. Um, did, did you enjoy the programming today? Was that useful? I'm, I'm very excited to see so many of you still here, still standing, uh, after some of you four days, and, and some of you actually traveled, uh, especially for this event. So I'm going to make it very brief. Um, Rather than going, you know, I think we, this was an idea of sort of looking forward, but uh, I think we talked about it today and a lot of the feedback that you gave us is, is really um, in line with what we'd like to do. You know, we'll continue working with, with uh, industries. We, we want to try to evolve our benefits. You know, our uh, advisory board was created and formed last year through a very quick sort of application process. I uh, would like to have a stronger representation from the community and, and sort of continue evolving it. I'm glad that CRA enablement came up in your feedback. I promise I did not edit this slide after you, told, after you told me. That was written in the plan. And then, of course, private, private sector. So I think we're quite aligned with uh, sort of what we hope um, you'd like to get. Um, again, who knows what the future holds, given uh, you know, we experienced a lot of growth this year, and so uh, I really look to you to help us uh, shape and grow the community in different directions next year. Uh, LF Europe is here to support you both as projects, uh, sorry, as members, but of course, I was really excited to see all of the projects talking about, you know, their growth last year. And I mean, that's ultimately what we're here for. Uh, the member benefits are, you know, a way to sweeten if you want the, the it's icing on the cake in terms of uh, uh, having you support and, and you know fund some of these projects but you know if the projects weren't growing both in terms of commits funding and, and adoption most importantly as uh, I think Guillaume said ultimately we want these projects in production um, or you know all the applications that we saw from from Kate you know uh, at a certain point the the cycle stops and so uh, very excited to see so much progress from last year i think it, it, it hopefully i got the feeling especially after the paternity leave that this is getting really real and um you know hopefully you got an idea of how we can support you i will close to by showing a slide that uh, for those of you who are here just today were not at the keynote this is sort of the was the flow of my keynote so it was only three hours, so I think you guys, you guys have any plans until like seven? I guess it's okay. Now, but the, one of the questions uh, in the feedback session that we ran before was like, oh, explain what the Linux Foundation does. And, you know, obviously every project, depending on its budget, you know, is capable of doing, you know, more and more things. There are layers and layers of, of things that we can do. You know, CNCF is our largest project. They have very mature machine of, of conferences, marketing, and uh, developer incentives, recognition, training, certification. Those are all, I would say, additional layers of sort of the onion. Um, but ultimately, at the core of it, uh, I, I would argue it's trust. And, and we've meant, we've discussed it in so many aspects today, um, what trust is. So I'm not going to go super deep in, in every aspect, but uh, I think the, the first and foremost is really trust uh, in, in a neutral space for your intellectual property. It does encourage contribution of others. Um, Peter referred to it very clearly. You know, we moved the project to the Linux Foundation so that you don't have to worry about SAP pulling the plug at a certain point. Um, we talk, and you know, I think, about the open governance. Uh, 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 Manuel uh, referred to it uh, in terms of the idea of, of bringing, you know, both large and small uh, uh, constituencies in the same place. Uh, we're not king makers. We provide the uh, infrastructure and the governance to do so, and the transparency. Um, there's been a lot of talks about rug pulls in the last year, 
And so, of course, very connected to these two aspects of it's a neutral space, so decisions are made by consensus through a level playing field. Well, that ensures, uh, you know, open source is, is one aspect. It's largely defined by the license. I don't see Stefano in the room anymore, but, you know, oh, there's back there. So as long as a license is compliant with the open source definition stewarded by the OSI, that's open source. There's a whole other layer of uh, neutrality um, that allows, you know, the license not to change over time. You know, a project might be <laughs> open source at the point in time, but if you are a large enterprise or even a developer, uh, you don't want to put all of your efforts into a project that then might change the license later on. And this is not to say that projects never change their license in a foundation, but at least if they do, it's a consensus decision. It's a decision that is, you know, uh, done by the board, by the TSC, by uh, a, a representative group uh, of uh, the community. This is more looking forward, but I think we feel a huge responsibility and with the efforts with the model openness framework, uh, you know, participation in the process uh, of OSI, you know, getting open source right is really the next, open source AI right is the next frontier for us, so this is a bit uh, looking forward and you'll continue as, uh, you know, as we, as we're now trusted by, you know, global organization and individuals to, you know, uh, always ensure that if the project is in the Linux Foundation, it is actually open source, all well, the same goes for AI. Uh, we look forward to the completion of the, of the open source AI definition and, uh, uh, you know, we'll make sure that projects that are, uh, if someone tells you that the project is open source AI and it's in the Linux Foundation, it is open source AI. Um, near and dear to my heart, to my heart, and I think, you know, it, it's having large industries continue to understand the value of open source and then invest in open source. I argue that we wouldn't be here if there wasn't so much corporate funding up to date of open source. And again, we talked about it during the panel. Uh, it's a positive sum game, you know. Uh, I myself come from a background of, of I gotta do open source because it's the right thing to do. Uh, I'm not gonna show you my dreadlocks pictures when I was, was a kid. Um, but, you know, I can, I, I certainly didn't show that picture to the banks. Uh, meaning <laughs> that's not the approach, you know, they have to start from business value. And I think oftentimes there is this sort of deb this debate, oh, this is too corporate, this is too, uh, um, you know, too hippie. I don't think that the two models are in any conflict. I think open source itself is the vehicle, especially with an open governance that allows a level playing field to make them coexist. And do we always strike exactly the right balance? Does a project always strike the right balance? Probably not. But that's also built into the model of, the flexible model of governance, governance that we have. The Linux Foundation doesn't provide templates, doesn't impose that each project has exactly the same governance uh, to each other. It, it really depends on the, you've seen now, very different types of projects that we have. Some in vertical, some horizontal, some more grassroots, some more, uh, uh, you know, uh, related to public sector and critical infrastructure. It is the nature of, of what we do and sort of the scale that we got to. And then last but not least, sort of building on that. Uh, I was having very interesting conversations today, not just in the collaboration of public sector to public sector, but of course, multi-stakeholder collaboration. and. I don't think there is yet one uh, model, um, one established model for public-private sector open source collaboration, but I think we have seen many experiments uh, that are happening. Uh, you know, Open Wallet Forum is, is one idea. Having a government advisory council is another. Participating in grants is at least sort of from a funding perspective another way. And so we are testing uh, the, the different options and um, 
and I think we're very well positioned, having sort of built this machine of individual and corporate collaboration. Uh, you know, this is, I think it's much easier to sort of incrementally add to it one more actor than sort of starting from scratch. So hopefully that explains. I didn't speak too long. That's good. Hopefully that explains the basis. Uh, um, we would we'll love to, to hear from you more, but I hope you leave this room you know, inspired. And uh, I hope to hear from you in terms of new projects, things that we can do together. Our team is growing. Yes, I still live in California. Um, so I wish, uh, well, I cannot say that. I was going to say, I, I was going to say, I wish I didn't have a baby, but no, that's not what I mean. I meant to say that having a baby uh, meant that I haven't been able to move yet to, to Europe. I, I, I wish I was here more often. That was the, I was going to say, I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. That's <laughs> not coming out right. Oh, oh, oh my, wife is, my wife is calling me. Are you guys live streaming or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, but kidding aside, I, I hope I hope you found this useful, and we really thank you for for your support. And uh, I think we're done for the day. You, you're free to go. Thank you so much. Thank you.